Hey, 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 it's Rebecca, and you are listening to Resilient by Design. Today's podcast is all about how to get your clients to sign off on your designs. I know so many designers have reached out to me about this topic, and this one is a long time coming. It's been literally on my docket to record four months. And finally, Vera was like, are you ever going to record the episode about how to get your clients to sign off? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to do it. (laughs) Um, I actually feel pretty inspired to talk about this one today because I think once you establish a way of doing things inside your business, you know, for example, to get your clients to sign off and move on to the next phase, uh, it gives you more confidence to sell your services. It gives you more confidence to sell your designs and really inspire your clients to feel confidence in you. So this episode, I'm sharing five tips to how you can get your clients to sign off on your design, as well as a little bonus tip, which is basically how we do it inside our own design firm. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. All right. (laughs) I'm Rebecca Hay, and I've built a successful interior design business by trial and error, podcasts, online courses, and so many freaking books. Over the last decade, I've grown from an insecure student to having false starts to careers, and now I'm finally in the place where I want to be. Throughout my journey, it's been pretty obvious that I'm passionate about business and helping other entrepreneurs do the same. Each week, I'll share tangible takeaways from my own experience and the experiences of other badass women to help you build your confidence and change your business. You guys know there is nothing I love better than staying in my all-day PJs all day. (laughs) Abode has launched my new favorite set of buttery soft pajamas that come in three fabulous colors, snow, camel, and my personal fave that's on the thumbnail for this podcast, Midnight. I feel so put together whether I'm recording a podcast like this, meeting a client on Zoom, or tucking myself into bed with the kids at story time. And As you all know, I'm a pretty big fan of the classics when it comes to design, and that translates to literally everything I purchase for my own home decor and my clients, and of course, my fashion. Abode also has the perfect, luxurious, 100% cotton, timeless bedding. It pairs perfectly with my chic all-day PJs. You gotta invest in your rest. Check them out at lovemyabode.com and type in resilient10 for $10 off your very first order. Treat yourself to the perfect pair of luxurious all-day PJs and soft cloud bed linens. All right, so today's episode is brought to you (laughs) from the little cabin that the family, my family, rented uh, for the season, for the winter season. And I'm up here today by myself, which has been just, oh my goodness, such a beautiful respite. I mean, being in the country is really what lights my heart up. I went for a walk this morning. The sun was peeking through the clouds. It's mild spring temperatures, and there's just like a scent in the air. And I don't know about you, but you know those times in your life where you you just feel whole, and you feel inspired, and you feel good. And that's how I feel when I'm in the country. So I'm I'm feeling pretty comfy. I'm curled up by the fire. I have my coffee. And I wanted to record this episode for you guys because I think as women, we oftentimes are nervous to speak up and ask for what we want. And specifically in business, I know with clients, for me, historically, it's I've struggled with asking clients to do things like sign off on a drawing set, get that money. Like I have just not ever been one of those people that is I don't know what you would call it. I'm not, I just, I'm not ballsy like that. And so I think this, that it would be helpful to share with you what I've learned and some tips that I've really um, understood to help me get better at asking clients and getting clients to actually sign off on my design. Because I know in the past, uh, you know, I didn't always, and then there would be issues later on. And then, of course, the people pleaser in me would acquiesce and say, oh, yeah, no, okay, that's fine. You don't like it. Even though in my head I was thinking, 
well, shoot, we had this conversation. You said you didn't say anything about the blue walls. I presented you the blue walls, but here we are. And you say you don't like the blue walls. Well, now am I eating the cost of the time? What about the extra painting? And of course I would because I just didn't want to rock the boat because I don't like confrontation. All that to say, I know I'm not alone in those feelings. And I've had designers, especially in our designers room community, say, you know, how do you get clients to sign off? Like, talk to me about that process. And I've shared it there, but I thought if they're asking it, probably others are too. And so much of doing this podcast for me has been to inspire others to do the thing that inspires them, but to do it stress-free and to enjoy it. And a lot of a lot of us as creative entrepreneurs are truly passionate about the craft, passionate about being an artist, but not necessarily passionate or knowledgeable on the actual business and tactics that you use to execute that and to have people hire you to do the art, to do the craft, to do the design. And I do believe that as women, quite often we hold ourselves back because of fear, because of not knowing, uh, assuming others have it figured out. But what I want to share with you today is that you can use little tactics in your toolbox to help build that confidence so that you can step forward and ensure that your clients sign off on your drawings or your design or whatever it is that you do every single time. So <clears throat> I'm just going to sip my coffee. Bear with me here. My coffee just keeps getting cold because the mugs up this Airbnb are, have like such a wide mouth. I'm totally off topic for a second. But you, oh, it's such a pet peeve of mine. And so they just don't stay hot. Like within minutes, it's cold. It's so frustrating. All right. <laughs> First world problems. Okay, so here are some five tips. I'm going to walk you guys through five tips that I think will help you to get clients signing off on your design every single time. And then I do have a little bonus tip that I felt like was kind of an extra, but not a necessity. So I'm going to walk you through those five tips. Grab a pen and paper if you have it to write it down. But these are things that have helped me ensure that clients sign off so we don't have any confusion later on or any misunderstandings. So <clears throat> number one, the first tip that I say all the time, and I might sound like a broken record to those of you who have taken my courses, set expectations early and often. I'm going to repeat that for the cheap seats in the back. Set expectations early and often. Whatever your process is, it doesn't really matter, but what matters <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, what matters is that you tell your clients at the beginning of when they first meet you, hey, this is how we do things. You do it from the very beginning and then you repeat it. Hey, this is how we do things. For us, it's on our website and then we send them a documentation. Here's how we work. Do you want to have a call? In the call, I say, here's how we do things. In the consultation, once they've hired us for that, I say, just a reminder, here's how we do things. And then in the contract that they sign with us, it's, it explains exactly how we do things so that there is really no question about what's expected. <clears throat> if you don't have a process or you don't have a way of doing things that you can educate your client on, it's going to be really hard then to ask them to sign on something or do something because it'll feel like it's coming out of the blue and maybe they don't want to do it or maybe they're hesitant because you haven't planted that seed in their mind. So <clears throat> setting expectations early and often when it comes to clients signing off on your design could look something like perhaps your, your way of doing things includes that you have clients initial every page of your presentation. It could look like, you know, a wording in your contract. Whatever it is, you need to tell them. And it might seem silly, like, why am I going to talk about this at the beginning? Like, it's not even really that relevant. That's not something they need to know until later. But you're setting yourself up for success by 
setting the client expectation really early. And when you repeat that, when it comes time to do the thing that otherwise might feel awkward to you, it's expected. And it's written down on paper probably. And so when you say it, you're also not nervous to say it because you've said it a million times. You know you've educated them. There can't be any, oh, well, I didn't know that was your process or I didn't know I had to do that or I'm not entirely sure. I'm not, I don't want to sign off on this because, because I'm not a designer. I mean, I can't read drawings. You can get ahead of those objections. So set expectations early and often. <clears throat> Number two, this is a big one. Um, always present in person. Always present in person. It just started to pour rain here, so I'm glad I went for my walk this morning. If you hear it, that's what that sound is, <laughs> beating down on the windows. What this is, is don't present on Zoom. Now, I will say a caveat. There's people doing it and they're successful. Good for them. For me, I don't find it's effective. The only times that I did it that way were because it was the pandemic and I thought, we want to keep this project moving forward, let's do it. It did not result in sign-off. It did not result in the client moving forward. And it resulted in a lot more time spent dropping samples back and forth and all that jazz. So in my experience, because <clears throat> it's my podcast and I can tell you like I do it and you can either listen or not, <laughs> that's up to you, but always present in person. And what that looks like for me now is that the clients, oh, that's my coffee machine telling me it's turning off, is the clients come to our office or studio and we present there. They have everything out on the table. And then the best part about presenting in person is I can see eye to eye how they're feeling, if they have a weird reaction to something, if they're not comfortable. It's also a whole lot easier to remind them again of the expectation of what the next step is when it comes to signing off on the drawings. I think presenting in person is very powerful. I think not only do clients um, really enjoy it, it is really fun for us. And when I say present in person, what I mean is present everything all at once. So this is something that I took ooh, a couple of years to really nail down. Um, I saw other designers doing it and I really was envious. I wanted to do a presentation like they would. And I thought, how on earth will I ever be able to put in all that work to make all of the design selections, including, um, I don't know, like the, the, the kitchen cabinet hardware, the paint colors for the walls, the door trim, the baseboards, like every tiny detail needs to be selected for this presentation. You're not leaving anything to decide later. The only thing you might want to leave would be accessories. Maybe put an allowance. That's what we do. We put an allowance for accessories that we purchase way closer to the reveal. But having a presentation in person where you've selected everything gives you the opportunity to hear and handle any client objections, but also they are signing off on everything. So you don't have to get them to sign off multiple times. It happens once. It's something that I never used to do. If you know my story, I used to sort of show up at the client's house. Oh my God, it's so crazy when I think about it. But that was what I was modeled, to be completely honest. Like that's that was what I knew. And I would show up with floor plans and we'd troubleshoot those and look at options. Then I'd come back a few weeks later with fabrics. And then I'd come back a few weeks later with like sofa styles and rugs and maybe some pictures and inspiration. I never picked like cabinet hardware. I never picked all those final things because I thought, well, I'll just do that, you know, on site. Like it's a creative process. I need to see in the space. I need to be in the space. I need to feel. I need to really like, I want to wait until it's done so I can see it and make sure it's right. But in hindsight, I see that that was my own insecurity with my ability to design and that I needed to really wait and see to reassure myself. And with experience and practice, you get better at designing up front without having to wait till the end to make those final decisions. But um, when I say present in person, I mean present everything. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is running a presentation with physical samples that the clients can touch and feel. 
The only way you're going to get clients to sign off on your selections is if they have a really clear sense of what it is they're signing off on. Now, obviously, you can't have a chair or a sofa or maybe a large <laughs> like Turkish rug, but you can have samples. You can have hardware. You can have fabric samples. You can have maybe a kitchen cabinet door with the profile, maybe even have it painted in the color you're proposing. Have big, large paint samples, like Benjamin Moore, big paint samples you can order. You can have tile, definitely have like, if you're doing a mosaic, get a sheet, a 12 by 12 sheet. Have as much as you physically can have in the presentation. I find the more physical items I have, the more likely the client is A, just going to love it all, and B, sign off and know what they're getting at the end. Because if it's just a picture, and again, this goes back to why I think you need to do presentations in person, if it's just a picture, you and I both know how deceiving that can be. Ordering a lamp online that looks a certain shade of blue and then it arrives and you're like, oh, right? So we like to see things in person as much as possible. I understand that it's not possible with everything, but that's what I'm always saying to my design team because now I'm not the one that is, you know, I'm not the one calling and ordering samples. I'm not the one picking them up. I'm not the one, you know, pulling the whole presentation together. I'm overseeing it, but I'm always reminding my designers, okay, why don't we have a sample of this door hardware? Where is a sample of the finish for the plumbing? I don't want to say this looks like this. I want to see the exact Moen finish and have all of that on the tables to eliminate the question of, well, how is that brass finish of that Moen faucet going to match that pendant light for the island, right? And then you're stuck there. And I'm sure any of you can relate to this. I've had situations like that where I'm like in my head thinking, oh shoot, I don't even know. Ugh. And then I'm saying to the client, well, we'll order some samples and we'll make sure. Well, all I'm doing is making more work for myself now and casting a shadow of doubt in my client's mind that I have really considered all the options and really paid attention to the details. So getting samples of absolutely as much as you possibly can for that presentation is going to make it a whole lot easier to convince your client that you've done all your due diligence and that you have their best interest in heart, and that it's a great design because they are not as visual as we are. They can't just picture it in their head. That's why they've hired us. So running a great presentation with samples on hand to have the clients touch and feel will make, it, you, make you far more likely to get clients to sign off on your designs, your drawing package, what have you. Obviously, there's still an opportunity for revisions. At least that's how our process works. And so it's a lot less revisions when they've touched and felt things. And I'm not going to go too far down this rabbit hole because I can go into a whole spiel about presentations. And if you're interested on how I run my presentations, please let me know. Um, so leave me a comment, I guess, in the Designer Meetup Facebook group. That's the best place. Um, but one thing that I will say for our presentations that has been really helpful is that the more we physically have, the less we need revisions. And we always have backup options, physical sample backup options, at, like on hand at the office. So if we see the client doesn't like that rug, we can quickly pull out three other options that work with our design that don't cause us to go outsourcing again or recreate the entire scheme. Cause you know how it is. You remove one thing and it's like, oh my God, everything has to change as a domino. So that has been really helpful for us to get decisions made on the spot. Wallpaper is another example. It's very personal. You guys know, if you know my designs, I absolutely freaking love wallpaper. I want to wallpaper everything. And we're in the middle of designing my, my farmhouse hayfields um, up just north of Toronto, which is going to be an Airbnb whenever it's done. And we're in the middle of just designing. And all I want is like all of the Anna French Tebow wallpaper. Like, give it to me. Can we put it on the ceiling, on the walls? Like, let's just like slather that stuff everywhere. But it's very personal. And so we always will, well, first of all, we always suggest wallpaper. One day it won't be trendy and I'll look back on these days and be like, oh, Rebecca. But for now, when we recommend a wallpaper, we always have a ton of backups because I know that's something that they will probably, sometimes they resonate and they love it, but other times it's either a price point issue 
or they don't like the pattern. It's just they don't feel it. And so we quickly have tons of options to save us time in revisions. Okay, I digress. But that will really help you get make your clients more confident when they are ready to deposit and sign off. Okay. <clears throat> Number four, being clear and firm about your revisions period. This is something that is really important. If you want your clients to sign off on your design, there needs to be a very clear revisions process so it's not dragging on and on and on. And you feel like, well, they've, and I've made this mistake before, where they are like, yes, we're good. And they sign off on a design, but we've removed a bunch of things because we know we need to reselect them. And that reselection process goes on. And we think we're helping ourselves by just getting money up front to get rolling on the, on the handful of things they do like. But then getting that signature then for the last item tends to drag on. So we're really strict with our revisions period now. After presentation, they're told that they have one week uh, to send us an email with any additional thoughts or changes that they want um, in addition to what we've talked about in the presentation. Usually if it's a good enough presentation and we have enough materials and we're really on the mark, anything can be cha- can just be swapped out in revisions and there aren't many additional items in an email. However, they have one week. And the reason for that is that A, we have reserved fabrics and some stock of product and we know lead times, but they can change. And also we want to tackle those revisions while it's fresh in our minds, right? So we can have a quicker turnaround. And then we take whatever time it needs. I usually say it's approximately two weeks. It could be less, could be more. And, um, and then once that's complete, we say we're going to we'll set up a Zoom or in person. It depends on what, the revision, what type of revisions. If it's just revisions to a drawing um, or uh, maybe it's just updating the proposal with the new wallpaper they picked in presentation, then we don't need them to come all the way down to our studio. We'll do it via Zoom, but we do a revisions review meeting with the client. And that is when <clears throat> they see absolutely everything and they say, yes, this is good. And that that is the point where they sign off. So we're very clear on what's expected in revisions. And I will tell you back to my very first point early and often, we tell them about the revisions in my discovery call. It's the first time I talk about it because I want them to understand that when they come to a presentation, they're not getting a million options. They get one option, the best foot forward, but that there's an opportunity for revisions and we request it within a week. And I know it sounds crazy, like you're just having a discovery call. I tell them then because I've seen it go sideways so many times. And then after revisions is when we literally get them to sign off. Okay, so that leads me to my last and final tip, which you're all wondering, but how? How do you get the signatures or the whatever, the money? So here's the how. Tip number five is you need to have a system to get their actual signature on your package. You can use a program like DocuSign, PandaDoc, HelloSign, Dubsado. There's all kinds of programs. You can have, you could have them in person do it, but you need to have a system that works for you. Do you need them to initial every page of your presentation just to be clear that they've under, they have understood how it all comes together? Do you need to, to, sorry, do you need them to initial every page of a construction drawing package? Whatever it is that you feel you need, you need to have a system for it. It could be as simple as you send it all to them via a DocuSign, for example. I think we've been we've used PandaDoc in the past because you can do it for free. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> and you get and you and they know where they have to initial. I will tell you one. I don't know one cautionary situation tale. I don't know. It's not really a tale, but is that sometimes getting them to initial every single construction drawing package and everything is so cumbersome and daunting and clients are so nervous to do it because they're afraid that if they sign it and there's some discrepancy, they're on the hook. So you need to kind of use your judgment. I can tell you we do not get clients to initial every single page. I know a lot of designers who do though, and they swear by it. And I think those are the designers that do a lot more um, construction and like new new construction and, and build. 
and everybody does something usually because they've had a bad experience, is my opinion. I, I haven't yet done that. I've considered doing it, so I will report back to you. But what we do have is we have them sign our contract uh, for the next phase. <clears throat> so we don't just sign a contract for working with us and that lasts for the entire project. We have two contracts. One is for phase two, and that is an agreement for the design fee and the work associated with the design to get us to the end of revisions. And then we present them with the proposal at the presentation and, and at the end of revisions, and they sign another contract, which signals that they are hiring us to implement and to purchase product on their behalf and to oversee the construction. And so they sign that. And there's verbiage in our contract that talks to what that signature means. We do that. And then we also have, and this is my bonus tip, and kind of like sneak this one in there, is that I want you to ensure that your contract has verbiage such as, um, for example, I have verbiage in my contract that says a deposit on any invoice is approval of the items and their total. So by signing a check for their living room decor, they are accepting every single item as it's presented and the total cost. That's what we do because it's simpler. Um, I think that you're less likely to get people questioning and circling back with you saying, I didn't approve that um, when they've really seen everything in the presentation. I really firmly believe that. So There you have it, guys. That is how we get our clients to sign off on our designs. It's an effective way. I hope there's something you can take away from this episode. And if you've had any experiences with this, I would really love to hear about it. Share it in our designer's room. Nope, that's a lie. That's not where you guys can share it. Unless you're a member, you can share it. But our designer uh, meetup Facebook group, it's a private Facebook group, but it's open to design professionals. You just have to uh, request to join. And if you answer all the questions, you'll be let in, but you do have to answer all the questions um, so that we ensure that everybody is in there and operating with integrity. And so, but if you join that group and if you're already a member, I would love, 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 love to hear, and I know the other members there too would love to hear, what do you do to encourage clients to sign off on your drawings so that you feel that you're protected? And has it worked? And have you had any horror stories? We all love to hear a good horror story. Uh, Hopefully you're through the other side, or maybe you're struggling with it. Post it there. I'd be happy to comment. Um, I know you guys can do this. Listen, if I can do it, I swear you can too. It is not going to happen overnight, but take little bitty, bitty steps towards getting there. Progress over perfection. You got this. I'll see you soon.